I'm Atuba Judge, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. I tell you every Friday, spend the weekend listening to the message again and again. It will really bless you. This week, we've entered some depths of truth that if you didn't get it the first time, go listen again and again until you get Sometimes you don't get it the first time. As I always tell you, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Please do. So now you, you have an array of messages. Just find the topic, listen, take notes, and pray. Let the Holy Spirit expound these things in your heart. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Join me in faith. I explained this to you yesterday. Whatever you need, Today's portion is your daily bread. So are you ready? Release your faith with me now. Say, Father, I demand for my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. And hey, listen, you are not just getting for today. You're getting for the whole weekend. Praise <laughs> God. Everything you need. Maybe it's a bill. Maybe it's healing for your body. Whatever it is, it's being supplied to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And hey, it is the display of God's love to you. Praise God. We've been talking about being a witness. And listen to me. Jesus said, we witness by the power of the Holy Spirit that we receive when the Holy Spirit came on us. Listen, brothers and sisters, can you simply allow the Holy Spirit to walk in you? Can you allow him to do the work? Jesus clearly stated, the words that I speak, they are not mine. They are my father's. And then he says, the work, the one who does the work is the father in me. So Jesus bore witness to the power of the Holy Spirit working in him. He, he, he was led by the Spirit of God. That tells you that it is possible to be led by the Spirit of God. Now this is how the power of the Holy Spirit works in us. First and foremost, we are led. Next, he gives us the energy when we obey. You see that now? If you see a sick person, for example, it comes first by him instructing you, go lay hands on that person. And the moment you set your heart to obey, you will know something. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen the way. It depends on how you have mastered your faith work. So some people will say, the moment I turned to go, something came on me like a jacket. Uh-huh. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Not that it came on you, it was energized from within you. And then you realize that you turn into another person. And then you go and you minister healing to that person and the person is healed. But other times you just go because he just says he wants you to heal that person. So you obey and you go. And you lay your hands and the person is healed. Can we just allow the workings of the Holy Spirit? Can you allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in you? The same thing with your life. You have a need in your life. It's not by running helter skelter looking for who will help you. Brothers and sisters, the help you need is already inside you. Jesus calls him the helper. The helper. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, he is in you to make your life show that Jesus was right. That's why he's in you. So someone reads the Bible and he's wondering how Jesus will feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. He's wondering. But he comes in contact with you. And effortlessly, he begins to see in your life that you don't have money and he's looking at you. And then before you know what's happening, he sees how 
money comes to you. And I was like, how did that happen? He said, I asked that you were here when I prayed. Yeah, I was here when you prayed. And I know you didn't call anyone. So how someone just call you right now and say, God said they should give you money? And the money the person is giving you is the money you, we actually need. Because sometimes, not just that you need, now you, you, you are in a group, maybe you're somewhere and you need help. And then they see how help comes to you right in that wilderness. You know what I mean by calling this a wilderness? And they go, wow. I said, now you understand how Jesus said, yeah, it's possible, man, it's possible. It's possible. What's going on? You are a witness. And you see, the role you play, because sometimes people think, oh, God does everything. We don't have any role. No, you have a role to play. Oh, you sure have a role to play. I'll share with, 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 with some people um, some Sunday last week. And I was like, hey, you know, we were made to believe that Jacob was a fraudster. You know Jacob in the Bible? Esau's brother. He, he took his brother's birthright. He stole his brother's blessing. So now just by those two things, we are made to believe that he, he was a crooked guy. But nobody painted the picture to us that he was a man of a well-disciplined man of integrity. Say, ah! Go read. Now, this man, I call a Shabaya. This man went to his uncle's house for two reasons. One was to run away from his brother Esau because Esau was very mad at him. Two, his parents had advised him that, look, don't marry from this place. Go down to your uncle's place. Go and marry for one of his daughters. So he had those instructions and then he left. On the way, God met him. Now, the moment he met with God, something happened in his life. Because now, see what now played out. Before he even reached his uncle's house, he saw this beautiful girl. He said, oh, who are your parents? Wow, that's actually where I'm going to. Okay. Go to his uncle's house. Look, I like this girl. And my parents actually said, I should come and marry from here. So I think I've seen her. <sighs> Uncle, I like your daughter. Okay. So what are you going to do? I want to marry her. Remember, this guy ran away from home. And according to him, he left with his staff. That's all he left with. The clothes on his back and his staff in his hands. So that he found himself in this situation. He sees a girl he wants to marry. He says, I want to marry her. He said, okay, this is the bright price. Well, I don't have that money. He had the option to say, uncle, send servants to my father. Let them tell him they have seen a wife. You should send the cows and the camels and the sheep and everything to pay for the bride price. He could have done that, but he didn't. Why didn't he? Put that in your mind. So, rather, instead of doing that, he said, okay, I don't have money, but there's something I can do. So what can you do? I can work for you. You can work for me? Yes. How much do you pay? Daily pay. This is the amount. Wow. So how long, if we do this calculation, how long is it going to take for me to pay? And they calculated seven years. So Laban's daughter were worth seven years labor. And Jacob agreed to it. You are going to spend seven years working without pay. Now, actually, with pay, but you don't get the pay. You understand what I'm saying? You are actually going to spend seven years working just to marry one girl? I bet many of you will get tired after the first two weeks. Or if you are, you struggle one month, you say, what is it? I was thinking by the time I do one month, the, the man is going to look at me and say, ah, 
you look serious. Let me give you my daughter. <laughs> See, sometimes we get little commitments without thinking what we're doing. But this guy stayed true for seven years. That's some character. For a girl, he wasn't making money. Have you ever thought about it? For seven years, this guy did not make money for himself. And then they now gave him the wrong wife. Ah. Look, if you want her, you have to do her another seven years. Because the price is the same. I will do. And he labored another seven years, 14 years altogether. He labored in the same place without pay. So he was still a poor man after 14 years. He was, because he was saying, no, what if? No, he wasn't making money. Go read this story. He was not there to make money. He wasn't. He saw what kept him that long was because he saw the wife he wanted to marry and he had to pay for her. Now, you see discipline and integrity in his life. Now, after 14 years, he said to Laban, okay, sir, I've done I've gotten two wives now. I want to leave. And Leba said, no, please don't leave. Stay. I have noticed that God has blessed me because of you. And that opens another area of Jacob's life. He was working for his uncle. I know more so, Pradia. He Halakusa Bradia. He saw to it that his uncle prospered, even though he wasn't making money. So there was this spirit of excellence that was at work in his life. And his uncle began to prosper. His uncle began to do well. So Laban said, look, please stay. And then they came up with this arrangement of, okay, I'm not going to pay you a salary because now, I mean... Jacob felt, now I have responsibility. I cannot depend on that minimum wage. You know, you know what I mean by that? I cannot depend on that daily pay because now Laban was ready to pay him. So after 14 years, Jacob will start making money. Jacob understood that time had gone. He knew his father was a wealthy man. He knew. He said, no, well, let me just go back to my father. I said, no, stay. And God I'm, now, this is what the Lord told me. The Lord says, I made him stay. Why? Because God wanted him to reap from where he had labored. And that's God and his justice system. Praise God. So he stayed. And you know the story. And in that circumstances, now he became a business partner with labor. I'll keep your ship, but this is the deal. Anyone they give back to that is this way will be mine. And this other way will be yours. Laban looked at it. It will work out for him. He said, okay, no problem. And he did that for another six years. And in six years, in six years, Jacob became a wealthy man. Did he steal from Laban? No, he didn't steal from Laban. Oh, go study Genesis chapter 31. Jacob was talking to Laban and he made some powerful statements that revealed his character. He said, look, all the while I kept your flock, your eel and sheep did not miscarry for 20 years. For 20 years he kept the flock. There was no miscarriage. Think about it. You think that happened by chance? No, that happened by faith. Jacob released his faith to God that there will be prosperity in this job, even though he was not gaining from it. And, and, and Jacob went further to tell Laban that, look, when the, when the lion comes or bear, I mean, eats your sheep, I don't come to give you that story. I bear the responsibility of it. When anything happens in the field, I take responsibility. I give you everything. If I go out with 10 sheep, I come back with 10 sheep. I don't come tell you, oh, there was an attack. Oh, there was a tsunami. You know, no, no stories. 
had some integrity, some deep personal integrity. And God saw, and, and, and in, in the midst of that, he was dealing with a dishonest boss. He was with a dishonest boss for 14 years. He didn't move, he didn't run, yet he prospered. Don't tell me your boss is a problem. Don't tell me where you walk is the problem. You are the problem. You have not learned the ways of the Lord. Oh, you know, my boss, that man, the only way to do it is to steal from him. Oh, don't steal from me. I know it's not good, sir, but that man, that's the only way. No, sir. No, no. Jacob did not steal. He said, Labor, you change my wages 10 good times. Well, guess what? He said, But the Lord helped me. The Lord visited him and said, Hey, I see what Laban is doing to you. You see, there is someone who is watching. So when I say, Allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. That is your problem. You are looking out to every other person, but not him. Let me tell you, he sees everything. Someone is cheating you, he sees it. Does he see it and just say, they can cheat you. You know, when we get to heaven, you will get much more. No, sir, here. He didn't wait to get to heaven before he blessed Jacob. No, in that same house where he labored for 14 years without pay, in that same house, he became wealthy. But you see, I'm sharing this story to point out to you that Jacob had a role to play. What was that role? He, uh, he, Jesus said, abide in me and let my word abide in you. So he was stuck. Never to do anything except the Lord commands him to do so. So in the midst of that, God's glory was revealed in his life. Brothers and sisters, Jacob allowed the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in him. And then you see all the fruits he came out with. He testified that Laban knew. Because Laban tried to change things. But Jacob always came out on top. Laban knew that the hand of the Lord was upon him. Laban bought testimony that this guy, you are your father. You people are like the same. We've heard his testimony. We've heard his story. Jacob was bearing witness of the blessing of Abraham. Now it's the same thing. Jesus, Jesus wants us to bear witness of his testimony. That's why we should allow Vaikoba, allow the Holy Spirit to walk in you, brothers and sisters. Allow him. Permit him. Don't be too self-conscious. Ah, and my time is going. Hey, no, I call it sabre. Allow the Holy Spirit. Oh, my wife, if 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 I don't do this, my I am nani nondo. Hey, go to the Lord and say, Lord, this is this is how my wife is behaving. Lord, this is how my husband is behaving. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I can't take this. You see, you think I don't know where to go to. You think I don't know. Ah, Eli do see ya. Lord, Lord, he said, if I ask anything, you know, I can't go anywhere. Well, like old Saba, you said, if I ask anything, Lord, this is my request. I want to stay here and enjoy being married. Yes, sir. Yes, ma. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit goes to war. He is so powerful you don't know you don't know the power of the Holy Spirit you don't know you don't know he's the one that said if a man's way pleases the Lord he will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him you don't know the power of God mm. but as you allow him to walk in you today thank you Jesus as you allow him walk in you you are waiting for him to walk on the other person no let him walk in you let him walk in you. Begin to bear fruit and watch how things will begin to evolve around you and adjust because of the fruit you're bearing.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we just bless you today. Your love is seen in our lives. Your grace is strong in us. And everything in our life will be a witness to your testimony. And you are Lord indeed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare over your life right now, go and bear fruit. And let your fruit remain. Let men see the love of God in your life. Let that become the testimony all around you. In Jesus' name. I'll see you on Monday. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.